So Ming, tell us about when you first picked up a camera and started using it and when you knew that this was more than just a hobby for you, this was a life passion and something that would be with you throughout your life. I asked my mother if uh, I could borrow her camera. It's, it was a, a brownie and hung in the closet all the time. And my father was a photographer, so I asked and I took my first photograph of my kindergarten class, all the black kids, students in my kindergarten class. Um, when I came to New York, I was always photographing. I even took some classes at Howard University. I decided when I found out photography was an art form. And at the time, in the 70s, there was a debate if it was an art form or not. I was invited to join Kamangi, and they talked about the politics, the politics of the image of black people here in America. And it was always derogatory. And so their plight was to, for black images created by black people. I, 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 not, I, I got the bug. No, <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was all over then. You know, I was become very passionately. I was like, I knew I always wanted to be an artist. My father photographed and painted, but I decided you know, with the photography, go that way. And in the 1970s, you became the first African-American woman photographer collected by the Museum of Modern Art. Can you tell me what that meant to you at the time? Mm -hmm. And then also how it was um, navigating the art world as a black woman, both the, the joys and the challenges and everything you felt. I knew about the Museum of Modern Art because Jacob Lawrence was one of the painters that I loved. I loved his work, along with Romar Bearden. I, those were two of the icons, Elizabeth Catlett. I found out that the Museum of Modern Art had given him, uh, had acquired some of his work. That's all I knew. Uh, they had an open invitation for people to submit work. So I submitted my work there. When I went to drop off my portfolio, they thought I was um, a messenger, you know, because I had jeans on and, you know, a leather jacket. I, I lived in the village, so I was out of that bend, you know. So after they acquired the piece, it was like getting an Academy Award and no one knowing about it because we didn't have all this that we have now, talks, interviews, no social media, even other artists and, and, and the curators or didn't know about me. So it was, it was a quiet, quiet storm <laughs> during that period. So can you tell us a bit about your use of light and particularly in uh, exploring your figures so often through black and white uh, imagery? What, what is it about the black and white um, photograph? And also, how does that allow you to use light to tell a story? Mm -hmm. Well, light is everything. At the time, black and white for photographers black and white film for photography was the serious art. You weren't an artist unless you created images in black and white. So with my work here the, uh, as an artist, as photography as an art form, I look at light, so it's everything to me. As a metaphor, like the sunflowers, they follow the light. I feel like I'm like a sunflower and I follow the light and it gives me the image. It... I don't think you don't want to answer the one about your favorite piece in the show, do you? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. These are all my babies. It's like trying to choose <laughs> the eldest child or the fifth child or they're all my children. Because there was years, there was years in between these photographs so you know one might have represented the period in the late 70s like mm -hmm. this one but you know I had another baby when I shot Brooklyn or when I shot the Chicago Art Ensemble or Sunrod they were both they were all moments this is a collection of those different moments for me mm -hmm. 
but it literally is like, do I like this one, <laughs> this son over my right. daughter, or my yeah. son over yeah. the older son? <laughs> <laughs> So the show is called Feeling the Future mm -hmm. uh, because your work is uh, both timeless, uh, futuristic, um, and ahead of its time in many ways. Um, what would you like the visitor to feel when they walk through this exhibition? Hmm. Well, we as people are survivors. We went through slavery, you know, Jim Crow, I mean, it goes on and on, um, police brutality, prisons, and we're still going on. But while doing this work, they, this survival, while we're surviving, we created, we, we, we created all of this. We, we created not only America, but the culture of America. We're so rich and like jazz, hip hop, you know, the painters, the, the artists. We, through that pain, we created. And through this creation, we not only helped, like for me, it was, I survived because I created. But we as people, the culture has brought us, you know, knowing who you know, Jacob Lawrence or Chicago Art Ensemble or Sun Ra, this is our culture. And so people should know about these people. James Baldwin, you know, it, just one text or one line of James Baldwin may open up a uh, entire world for just one son or one daughter that is struggling to find a place because it's very difficult you know, just surviving here, just from every day. So, you know, I, I think that's what I want, that there's possibilities. We have possibilities through creating because there were people that came before us. You know, I'm just holding hands like this with, you know, Ramar Bearden and Elizabeth Catlett, you know, Jane Cortez, all, you know. Yeah, and I... I think that's part of our survival. So you've done several collaborations uh, throughout your career with um, artists, with uh, the WNBA. Uh, can you tell us? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Okay. And, no, let's talk about Michael Jordan, okay? <laughs> My hero. Uh, and uh, also, you had mentioned oh, Alicia Keys. Um, I think... The, it was the work, you know, when you have a job or you work with people, it's a collaboration. But for me, it was acknowledging me, you know, like Michael Jordan, like, I mean, who doesn't love Michael Jordan? <laughs> you know, I was sitting at, there was at Alicia Keys party and I'm sitting there and, you know, everyone's the who's who in the world and, and I'm sitting there looking and I'm just with my assistant because I was photographing and then all of a sudden, this head turned around the corner and said, I know who you are. You're the photographer, Ming, <laughs> which was Michael Jordan. His face was like, that was, That guy's so smart. He doesn't miss anything, you know, because I'm sitting there, all these hundreds of people with the, the bling bling, the whole beautiful, they were all beautiful, you know, and singers, and rappers, and um, actors. But he saw me. I didn't even see him. And I'm just sitting there and then all the court of his face was there. Like that was, <laughs> that's what I liked about it. <laughs> right. so, so in the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. You know, I was like kind of hesitant about doing because it's more of a commercial job. And um, I was like, I don't know if I want to photograph Michael Jordan. And my son Mingus, who was a, uh, a, a basketball player. He's like, I wanted to be Michael Jordan more than half my life, and you're not going to shoot him like that. So I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And so you, got, you got to meet Mike. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would like to thank you on behalf of the International African American Museum for bringing this show to the museum and uh, gracing all of the visitors with your amazing artwork and for having this conversation today. Thank you. And I want to thank you because I feel very blessed 
and I walk around now in such gratitude. This being here means so much to me because it was part of not just my vision of, you know, my place, but my great grandmothers, and they always talked about this. So it means I feel so honored and so humbled by being here. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>